What is up, college sports fans and fellow members of Mountaineer Nation? Welcome to another edition of Coos's Corner, your go-to channel for sports with a heavy dose of West Virginia Mountaineers. I appreciate you tuning in tonight. I've got a special show for us. I've got a special guest dropping in. Before I get to that, I want to ask if you haven't, please subscribe to my channel. Please give me the thumbs up and smash that like button. And also, please leave comments. Let me know what you think about tonight's conversation. Uh, Got a Boise State fan going to join us tonight to talk about Big Twelve, uh, to talk about Boise State possibly coming to the Big Twelve, and what that would mean for the school and for the conference. We'll also touch on uh, Liberty potentially being a candidate to go to the AAC and what they would bring to the conference. So, without further ado, my special guest. Hey everyone, I'm here with Bronco Blaymeyer. He is a uh, he has his own YouTube channel. He's a Boise State fan, as you can tell. He's covered in blue. <laughs> And uh, we're going to, he and I are going to discuss expansion, B12 expansion, what Boise State brings to the table, why they might be the next team to make that move to the B12. And uh, Bronco, before we get started, uh, will you tell my viewers a little bit about yourself? Yeah, about your I, was, I was expecting your credits there to roll because I'm so used to watching them on the channel. <laughs> but uh, uh, yeah, I'm a Boise State fan, as properly introduced there. Um, I've been doing the YouTube thing for the last couple of years here. I used to do a lot of writing, uh, Boise State-related writing. I just didn't have time for it anymore, so I switched to YouTube. Um, I've enjoyed it so much. I'm thinking of doing it for the long haul here. Um, I don't just, you know, if you're watching this, you're not a Boise State fan, You, I still, I still encourage you to check out my channel. I do other non-Boise State-related things, college football stuff in general. But uh, obviously, Boise State's the theme. Got a big game against BYU this week, and I'm excited to talk about the Big 12 expansion. Awesome. Yeah, and before I forget, uh, I'm going to post the uh, – in, in the description box, I'm going to post a link to Bronco's channel for, for my viewers if you guys want to go check it out. And I encourage you to do so. He has some very interesting stuff. He he does – I think he does a top 10 games of the week video every week. Uh, of course, he'll review and preview every Boise State game. Is that correct, Bronco? Yep, yep. And then I also I'm doing it's a new new video series where it's a midweek halftime show, give you something to watch during the midweek, and I cover one to three big topics that happen the week before or coming up the next week, and it's uh, always 15 minutes or less. So kind of new 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 channel option there as well. Gotcha. Cool. Sounds good. Well, let's dive right into the expansion talk if if you don't mind. Um, it, all indications are pointing to the, uh, Boise State and Memphis being the next two additions to the Big 12 if, if they decide to expand further, which most people seem to think they will eventually. Um, what are your – from a Boise State perspective, uh, what, is, what, what does Boise State bring to the table to the Big 12 Conference? What do they have to offer? Yeah, absolutely. You know, uh, there. this is good for both, for Boise State, obviously, and for the Big 12. I've been saying it for a while in my other videos, Big 12 needs to continue to expand. You know, 12 is not enough. Um, it, they needed to expand to 12, uh, past 12 a while ago when they were kind of getting outstripped there, and they uh, petitioned the NCAA to allow them to play a conference championship game without having, you know, two divisions in the conference. So right now, with they're finally back to 12, but even with 12 teams, they're still uh, tied for the smallest conference in the Power Five there with the Pac-12 as 12, but every other conference has 14 or 16 teams. So expansion is definitely the right move, and Boise State does bring a lot to the table here, and I'm just going to run through this real quick, and and if I'm talking too much, give me a signal or something, I'll stop. <laughs> but I'm just going to run through here real quick. So first off, yeah, what does Boise State bring? Well, it brings a consistent and winning legacy. You know, Boise State is the second most winningest football team since 2000. Um, and they are only behind Ohio State for the most win for winning percentage. You know, as far as games overall, there's different teams play more games in certain contexts. But as far as winning percentage, Boise State has the most wins of any con any uh, football team aside from Ohio State. And uh, as far as winning at home, that's the big one back on our uh, our blue turf, hard to win on the blue. But uh, as far as the blue turf goes, uh, Boise State they were to, to begin this season they were the number one winningest team at home. Uh, two bad, two unfortunate losses to our rival Nevada and then Big Twelve team uh, Oklahoma State have knocked us down to third. But we're just behind Alabama and Oklahoma as far as winningest percentage at home as well. So Boise State, you know, obviously this year, a little bit of a down year. We have a brand new head coach brought in a whole brand new staff uh, going through a little bit of a rebuild. First time Boise State's out to a two and three start since 2001. But the fact that Boise State has never started season two and three since 2001 says a lot for this program and uh, where it's going to be headed going in the future. I think Avalos can definitely get back on top. Another thing that Boise State brings is viewership. Um, now, as far as, you know, 
Boise State's campus. It's not very big. You know, we got about 20,000 students residentially. Boise as a city, it's definitely growing. It's one of the biggest growing, uh, fastest growing cities in America right now, but it's still small compared to a lot of these other, uh, you know, power five type cities. But what Boise State brings is viewership. And the way that college football is heading, it doesn't really matter so much with stadium attendance dropping across the country. It doesn't really matter the butts in the seat. What matters most is the TV viewership. That's where the money's coming through. The big contracts are the TV contracts. Boise State actually draws so much from its TV viewership that they have a separate package that they negotiate outside of the Mountain West deal um, with, with the TV companies. Um, so Boise State, they bring so many viewers that, uh, that they're too big for the Mountain West as far as the TV viewership goes. They're actually now this, you know, they're 64th overall in average per game 2015 to 2019. Uh, so with 476,000 viewers per week. But that is a pretty big number considering that they play in the Mountain West time zone Super late games. They're not in the Power Five conference, not big marquee matchups. If you consider Boise State in a Big 12 atmosphere where they're playing a little bit more of these primetime, daytime TV games, playing, you know, Oklahoma, West Virginia, <laughs> Texas, well, not Texas, they're gone, Texas Tech, all, you know, TCU, big, big marquee matchups, that's going to bring in a lot more viewers. And Boise State's already hitting strong with the conference that they have. In fact, there are only uh, five group of five teams that have more. TV viewers than Boise State. Two of them are academy teams, military academy. So that's not really fair. They have the whole military rooting for them. Um, and then the other, uh, the other two are actually going to be joining the Big 12 now, Houston and UCF. And then the other one is Memphis. They also have just slightly, they're just two slots ahead of Boise State. Um, and Boise State notably gets more TV viewers than Cincinnati, and they're joining the Big 12. So if if the Mount, if Big 12 could draw in. Boise State here, they'd be getting a lot as far as winning. Boise State would come in with a lot of winning consistency and be able to maintain that. And uh, and then TV viewership is another one. Uh, I'm going to go through two more real quick things here. I hope I'm not taking up too much of the time. No, you're good. Keep keep rolling, man. You're covering so, everything I want you to cover. <laughs> cool. So the two quick things here is uh, notoriety and novelty. So obviously the blue turf here, you know, it's uh, that brings a lot of attention to Boise State. You talk to people all over the country, and the, they usually say that they'll watch at least one Boise State game a year just to see that blue turf. So that's kind of tying back to that TV viewership. But the blue, the blue turf, you know, it was a it was a big decision there for Boise State to implement that. Um, you know, long time ago in their history, I think I believe it was in the nineteen seventies they put that in, and it's really brought a lot of eyes to the program. And so getting the blue turf into the Big Twelve, Big Twelve is already getting eyes. It's a Power Five program; they already bring being in attention but big 12 has started to slip away with the rise of the sec becoming more dominant the big 10's rising prominence um and the uh, acc is already all drawing off of that east coast bias so the big 12 is starting to kind of slip down even though in my estimate they're still one of the top programs top uh, conferences in the power five they need a new infusion of life and they've done that with bringing in these uh, four new uh top group of five programs but a boise state team which is already always one of those top storyline generators. You know, even if they're not necessarily having the best year, they're always going to be one of those teams that everyone's going, what's going on with Boise State this year? Um, that would only grow with Boise State's addition to the Big 12. The final thing here is that Boise State infuses with Oklahoma and Texas leaving. The Big 12 is, is losing a lot of potential rivalry game matchups that they already have right now. Now, some of those would probably be protected. I would assume the Oklahoma-Oklahoma State game would continue. But when Texas left, uh, Texas A&M left, Texas A&M and Texas didn't play each other anymore. So, you know, we don't know where those rivalries are going. So bringing in some new rivalry games, which will get Bring, bring notoriety and uh, eyes to the Big 12 is going to be huge. And Boise State does that. So as far as current members right now, we're not even counting the new people coming in. Uh, Boise State and TCU, they've only played four times, but they have a very bitter rivalry. If you talk to any Boise State fan, they will tell you that they consider TCU a rivalry. Um, I don't hate really any team out there except for TCU. Hmm. I absolutely hate TCU. Even when Boise State was playing them, usually if Boise State's playing someone, even a better rivalry like Nevada, even if Boise State's playing them, I'll usually root for that team to have success just because it will look good for Boise State. With TCU, I didn't care if they were coming in undefeated, even if, sorry, I didn't care if TCU was coming in uh, with zero wins in the column, which would make Boise State's win not look that good. I wanted them to come in terrible because TCU, that game, we played them four times. We've uh, three bowl games and one conference championship before they left. There's a lot of bitterness when TCU won that last game, that last Mountain West game, and then left to join the Big 12. Um, Gary Patterson said he was done playing Boise State. He didn't want to play them ever again. 
there's a lot of lot of animosity and Boise State fans have been waiting a long time to get a chance to go out and take a shot at TCU again. Uh, Boise State versus Oklahoma, that's the game that really brought Boise State onto the map, that 2007 Fiesta Bowl of the 2006 season, but the 2007 Fiesta Bowl, Boise State upset Oklahoma. Um, I lived in Oklahoma for two years, uh, and it was funny, the Oklahoma State fans would always be patting me on the back saying, we love how you beat OU, and the OU fans would be cursing at me when I was out in public. So there's definitely it's a, an animosity there, and I believe that those two teams were in the same program. You would see uh, competitive rivalry nature between them. And then Oklahoma, uh, Oklahoma State versus Boise State, they've played two games so far in the last few years, 2018 and then, uh, sorry, 20, yeah, 2018 and then this season. And both games were very close. This last game basically came down. It was 21 to 20 victory for Oklahoma State. And really it came down to a referee decision where they overturned a fumble return for a touchdown that would have won Boise State the game. Um, so not necessarily a lot of animosity between these two programs, but I could definitely see something generating out of that, just how close these matchups were um, and, and the feelings between the two programs, especially ending as disappointing as it did for Boise State. Talking real quick here, and I'll be done. Uh, about the new teams coming in here. Well, BYU is a big one. Boise State and BYU currently have a rivalry game. That's, of course, the next game up for Boise State this week. Um, they currently have a rivalry game. Boise State leads the series 7-4, to four, and they've played every single year since 2012. So, you know, Big 12 country, you guys look at your rivalries as being 100 years old, and so it's a little bit of a different perspective. Boise State's only been a college since 1932, and they've only had a th football team since 1933, and they've only been FBS Division I since 1996. So we're a young program, uh, even though we're, we've kind of established ourselves as a, as a group of five blue blood, we're still a young program and our rivalries are young. But the Boise State versus Big 12 rivalry, for me at least, is probably the biggest rivalry, even looking at conference rivalries. The Boise State versus BYU rivalry is probably the biggest one for us Boise State fans. Um, a lot of back and forth there, a lot of animosity. Uh, BYU players have uh, punched Boise State players in the past uh, before, during, and after games. So this, it's been, and there's a lot of uh, bitter feelings between those two programs there. Uh, and keeping that, both schools want to be able to maintain that rivalry and being in the same conference would allow for that. Uh, and then UCF, Boise State versus, I actually went to the Boise State versus UCF game this year. And that I think is, I think it already is, it felt like a rivalry game. Boise State and UCF, they've only played one time, but they've been the two group of five schools over the last six, five, six years that have been competing for that New Year's Six slot. And so even though they haven't played each other, they've been on each other's minds. They've been rooting against each other for one or the other to take a loss so that they could get a chance to jump over the other one in the steam to be able to get that New Year's Six Bowl. And when I went to that game, the adult fan, you know, the, the, the non-student fans were pretty friendly, but the student body was extremely aggressive. Um, a lot of vulgarity, uh, left and right, and it felt like a rivalry game. I mean, every single time that UCF scored a touchdown, they chanted, uh, F Boise, Boise sucks. You know, but they actually said the F word. Um, so I think that I, I could definitely see that kind of becoming even a, a, a cemented rivalry game if those two teams were in the same conference. Um, so that's really the football perspective. I could talk about uh, the Boise State, you know, I, if they joined, they probably would be a football-only member. Um, that's just kind of the way it is. The basketball is okay, but the rest of the sports really aren't necessarily the Big 12 level. But I think as far as a football perspective goes, Boise State should be a no-brainer when it comes to joining Big 12. For Boise State's own perspective, what they bring, uh, what it would add to their own program, but also what Boise State can give to the Big 12. Awesome. I appreciate that. You, you covered a, a lot of stuff there, and most of it uh, I was going to ask you about. No, I don't have to. <laughs> awesome. Sorry, sorry to steal the thunder but, uh, there. <laughs> it was interesting. The one thing I was going to talk about, you mentioned briefly, I was looking the other day uh, doing some research about, you know, why, why are certain teams being chosen for these conferences? Other Because we, we, you and I both know there's more to it than what happens on the football field. Right. That's a part of it, but there's more to it than that because at the end of the day, it's all about the dollar. Right. And I was looking at, uh, you know, why some of these certain schools are being targeted as potential expansion candidates. And I was looking up biggest, largest growing cities in America, and Boise, Idaho popped up. And I'm thinking, yeah. wait a minute, <laughs> what? And Idaho itself was one of the fastest growing states in America. Yes. And I found that very, number one, it's, it's awesome. Uh, I think more people are moving out of the cities and into the, into the more rural areas, more than likely. But, and you touched on it. I think – it's a good idea for these conferences to target these teams that are, they're not for, for future purpose. They're, they're looking at more than just today. They're looking down the road. Right. And uh, 
they can see that a, a city that's growing like Boise, Idaho, with a football program like Boise State that can, wins consistently and is, you know, is uh, operated well, uh, you know, from the top apparently because, I mean, that's obvious that they are. Um, will probably sustain for a long time. And, and those two things just mesh. And I, I found that very surprising that Boise is one of the fastest growing cities in America from a population standpoint. Yeah, my uncle just bought a house there and it uh, last year and sort of doubled in value because of just the growing and the housing market is kind of really feeling the stress of it. So, yeah, Boise State. And, and that's really something, if you don't mind me just saying real quick here, is that that's really been something that's held Boise State back for a while. The last time that Big 12 is considering expansion, the, the big talk was TV markets. And, and they don't consider the the national viewership they talk about what does the city that the team is in bring to the table and back then boise state was a lot smaller than they are now not the state sorry the uh, the city boise idaho was a lot smaller than they are now um and that was really kind of a little bit of a hindrance there to boise state being able to move up to the big 12 when big 12 decided not expand um was because they didn't necessarily bring the same tv market market and you talk about why they choose teams they look like you're saying they look at those cities they look at who can they bring in recruits wise and viewership um but Boise State's problem is already kind of fixing itself, like you said, because of that influx of people coming into the state. And I also think that as the metrics become more important for the TV viewership and the advertising, we start moving towards a more digital age. I also think that while Boise State might fix their problems citywide here in the future, the way the city is expanding, I also think that their the, what Boise State already brings to the table, which is that national perspective. I mean, you can go to any football, pretty much any football store, and they'll usually have that state and the conferences on uh, Power Five conferences related to that state as far as its gear goes. But they'll usually have at least one Boise State item. You know, they're not going to have a Wyoming football or uh, you know or a Toledo or something like that. But they'll they'll have a you know Boise State keychain or something because Boise State fans across the entire country because of that blue turf and because of what Boise State has been so successful in the Group of Five. So yeah, right. Yeah, we we actually even though West Virginia is already in a Power Five, we have dealt with some of the same same things. Back in 2010, West Virginia was trying to get into the ACC, I think. At least that's what all reports were indicating. And one of the things that hindered us was, well, West Virginia is such a small state that I have been a TV market. What they didn't take into consideration was most of the people from West Virginia leave West Virginia to find a job because West Virginia's economy has never been great. Right. So there's West Virginia fans scattered throughout the whole country. You can travel about anywhere in the country, especially in the eastern part of the U.S., and you'll find you'll meet a West Virginia fan. Tennessee, right. Myrtle Beach, North Carolina. North Carolina is full of West Virginia. Matter of oh, fact, yeah. half the people I know from where I live go. That's where they go to work, and they're right. all Mountain Dew fans. And you go to Florida. There's a lot of them in Florida, and not to mention West Virginia has a large alumni base that's spread throughout the country. And the Flying WV is a recognizable brand anywhere you go. I mean, pretty much. So right. that West Virginia fans know understand what you're going through there. Now we've been fortunate enough to end up in a Power Five, but we almost didn't. Uh, I mean, had it not been for the Big 12, you know, rescuing us, so to speak, or, or accepting us, then, you know, we might still be – we might be in the AAC, you know, who knows. Right. Um, but – Which have been interesting. So, so, I, so I totally understand where, where you're – people don't look at the big picture sometimes, but I think times have changed now, like you said about the digital age. Uh, West Virginia does well like Boise State does. West Virginia also does well in the streaming services. So, and I think that will make us, should we ever get in a situation where we need to find a whole nother, a new home, I think we'll have a better chance today than we did 10 years ago. I think we'd have more options. Um, let me switch gears for a second, if you don't mind, and talk about, still, still on conference expansion, but uh, the AAC has been trying to poach teams from the Mountain West, according to reports. What are, what's, what's going on with that in, uh, in in the Boise State camp, what's uh, the Mountain West? What are they having to say? Do, are there any Mountain West teams you think will actually go to AAC? What do you yeah, think, I think on that? I think initially there was definitely a lot of uh, interest there. And, and there's the one thing that really was kind of driving that is that there is a perspective. Um, I think it's a false perspective nationally that the American Athletic Conference is heads and tails better than the Mountain West Conference. Um, and that's that's really not true. When you compare these two conferences, the American Athletic Conference to the Mountain West, 
I believe that the, the last few years, the Mountain West has actually been the stronger conference. But there's a couple of things that drive you. When you look at you look at the metrics here, the uh, Mountain West has more since 2013. So just counting since AAC has existed, Mountain West has more full game wins, 26 to only 19 by uh, the American Southern Conference. They have more head to head wins, not counting this current season, but they have more head to head wins, 11 to 10. Um, and I and over the last three years, they have more power five wins than the American Athletic Conference as well. Especially this season, Boise State has five. The American Athletic Conference only has three. So there's really been that, but but because of the East, when you call it the East Coast bias, this is why the Pac-12 always gets crapped on, and Boise State and well Mountain West in general is because all our games are like 8 p.m. Eastern Eastern time. Nobody is watching Mountain West and Pac-12 play, uh, and they're not seeing what they're able to put on the football field. So there's this perspective that the American Athletic Conference is so much better than Mountain West. Um, and I just wanted to kind of dispel that before I went into talking about, like, you know, what these teams were thinking. But with the way that the American Athletic Conference has promoted themselves, they definitely are an appealing conference to join. The American Athletic Conference, I'm not, you know, I'm saying that they aren't necessarily the great conference or the top conference that they claim to be, but they market that way. And that is one of the big reasons they're viewed. I mean, that this whole power six push that the American Athletic Conference has been doing I wish the Mountain West would do something like that. As far as conference leadership goes, the Mountain West has the worst conference leadership of any conference in the country. They just sit on their hands and they do nothing to promote their teams. But the American Athletic Conference does. And there was definitely a push early on. Uh, Boise State and San Diego State were the initial candidates, but it just wasn't going to work out for Boise State's non-football programs. And if Boise State's going to join a program as a football-only member, it's got to be Power 5. That's always been the mantra going on. Um, so then they were going after San Diego State, but San Diego State didn't want to go if Boise State wasn't going to go um, because then they're going all across the country. They don't have a single team in their own part of the country. Uh, and the conference, the American Athletic Conference without Boise State just doesn't have the same draw. You know, like I said, Boise State brings a lot to the table, with their marketability. Uh, so then they're really going after kind of another next four up. And I, I know that Air Force, Colorado State, I believe uh, Fresno State were on that. I don't remember who the next, the fourth, I think it might have been Utah State were the four teams that they were going after. Um, and they really looked there for a second that Air Force and Colorado State were going to draw. I mean, because they already have Navy in their conference. There was a push to try and get Army and Air Force and then have all three academy schools in the American Athletic Conference, which would have been a huge coup for them if they'd been able to do that. Um, but I, I believe that Army was, they weren't able to get Army at, at the time to come over and uh air force and colorado state saw boy state and san diego state had backed out and kind of saw the writing on the wall and they decided to go out as well and the mountain west actually this week i believe was um put out a statement saying that their the conference is sticking together that they're they've talked with all the school presidents and they've all said that yeah most of them were considering moves to america at their conference but they're done with those discussions the mountain west conference is not as far as the athletic conference goes, Big 12 opens up expansion again. They're probably going to lose some teams. But as far as group of five schools, what's looking at it right now, the Mountain West Conference is sticking together and they're not, not losing any teams. So uh, that was big for Mountain West because they are finally getting this season the recognition that they deserve for a long time. Sports Illustrated, actually, in a recent article, put the Mountain West as stronger than both the American Athletic Conference and the Pac-12 this year based on the heads-to-heads and how these schools are playing. So I think a lot of it has to do with the American Athletic Conference is losing its marquee teams and the, the, the media, the mob, is looking for the next, te- the next conference, next teams to push, and the Mountain West is coming up as, a te- as something that they could. So we might be able to overcome this East Coast bias going forward here in the future, and the Mountain West is looking strong. So, yeah, I don't think that any Mountain West teams um, – are going to be going even in the near future, and they're definitely not going to be leaving uh, as far as this year for sure. So, so that means uh, – does that mean – and this is a uh, rhetorical question, but does American Athletic Conference now look at the Sunbelt Conference for teams? Do they look at Conference USA? I mean, where are they going to go? I, I think the Sunbelt is a strong option. It makes more sense geographically. The Sunbelt is really on the rise. I mean, for a long time, the Sunbelt was – garbage <laughs> we all know that i mean sunbelt was definitely the last conference in college football behind conference usa behind the mag mountain west and america that conference but the sunbelt um this season had at one point had two conference two teams in the top 25 and when you look at the top of that conference they're they're really one of the stronger conferences now i, I would if i was rating group of five conferences i would probably go mountain west american athletic conference sunbelt so last to third, and then we would uh, probably go Mac and then Conference USA. So the Sun Belt, those top three teams, Louisiana, Coastal, and Appalachian State, 
bring a lot to the table. Appalachian State has been a team that's been historically good in that conference. Um, and then Louisiana and Coastal Carolina, big up and comers. And I would love to see Coastal Carolina's offense is really exciting to watch. I mean, there's it's hard to defend. I've never seen an offense quite like that. It's like a mixture of the spread of the spread um, of the option. And then, and then, and then a uh, up tempo passing attack at the same time. They just hit you with a spread option passing offense, which is incredible to watch. Um, and I would love to see what they could do with American Athletic Conference type caliber players. So I think that the Sun Belt is definitely a push. There's also, like I said, Army. I think if they could get them to come over, would be a big gain. And then my other school, my I, I'm fans of two programs, Boise State, and my other school, Liberty. Liberty has a lot to offer as well. Um, and I, I can talk about them if you want me to, but I also don't want to take up too much time. So you can kind of let me no, know. If you... uh, I would real quick. Uh, Liberty has actually, I've, I've heard some analysts mention Liberty as a potential candidate for the American. Yeah. Not, not a lot, but there's been a few that have suggested it that have a lot of respect for what Liberty's doing. Uh, number one, this is a stupid question. I should know this, but what conference is Liberty in right now? They're independent. They're in their fourth season of the FBS. Independent. Okay. All right. I thought they were, but I, I didn't want to assume. Um, and they've been FBS now for four years. Four years, four, and, and four they're four already years. they were ranked, weren't they? A couple weeks ago, they were. Yeah, they were. Um, they were just on the edge of being ranked. They were right at twenty sixth before they lost to Syracuse, but they got ranked last season in the AP poll, and right. they actually ended up beating Coastal Carolina in the bowl game. And of course, Carolina, of course, was the the media darling last season. So, right. and there you go. You know, Liberty has a huge, a huge uh, enrollment. They have national fan base with with the Southern Baptist. Uh, you know, denom- being the t- tied in with the Southern Baptist denomination there. So, I think Liberty to me is another attractive candidate for any conference, uh, especially I'm- somebody like the American. Absolutely. And if we're going to talk about Liberty for a second, I'll just change my hats here. That's, real quick. <laughs> that's perfectly fine. What do you think Liberty brings specifically to the uh, American or any conference for that matter? Well, you've already kind of touched on it a little bit, and I prepared them here as a uh, potential. I thought we might talk about them American at least, uh, so I kind of t- prepared a couple points. But, yeah, you've already touched on it initially there. Um, it, they do bring that, that automatic fan base, you know, uh, Jerry Falwell, um, senior, the, you know, the original televangelist, uh, he, what his vision for Liberty was to make them the, uh, the Baptist equivalent of BYU or Notre Dame. So he, he, uh, so, and he's done that. I mean, or, or Liberty has done that. I mean, they've grown into national steam. They've got it into the FBS um, and they have fans, like you said, all over the country, uh, with that, that Baptist, and they're not denominational now, but they're still that evangelical Christian. Oh, okay, I didn't know that. Yeah, so that well, they're they're not only non-denomination, non-denominational now, but uh, they do have a massive evangelical Christian base across the country. Okay. Um, and then, like you said, they have a massive uh, student body, over a hundred thousand students. Most of them are online, but their uh, their residential students is growing every year. I believe their last class was sitting at uh, seventeen thousand. So the residential student campus is growing, and then they, every year they're producing more fans through their online programs. Over, like right. I said, over a thousand students just online. Um, so when you when we're talking about metrics, we're talking about TV viewership. Liberty brings all of those to the table. There's another bit about Liberty that a lot of people don't know is that they the school has a two billion dollar endowment, um, and they are forced to spend a certain X amount of millions every year to stay a nonprofit because of all the donations that they get. Um, and they so because of that all of their programs get a huge amount of financial support, and they have a multi million dollar football program. Uh, they just built. Last, in the last 10 years, they built a brand new, uh, they expanded their stadium by 6,000 seat, seats. They built a brand new indoor football training facility. Uh, they built a, a brand new um, academic support state, uh, facility for the, specifically for their student athletes. Uh, and they have plans. So I was talking, uh, I graduated from Liberty in 2019. That's why I'm a Liberty fan. They didn't have a Air Force ROTC at Boise, so I was forced to go to Liberty. Uh, well, not forced, but, you know. Uh, that became an option there. So right. uh, while talking to uh, Jared, to the athletic director over there, E. McCaw at Liberty, he uh, he said right now they're expanding the stadium to twenty five thousand. Looks beautiful, but they have plans to expand the stadium to sixty thousand. So long term plans as this as they grow as a program as they continue to pack out that stadium, they have plans to expand and to grow. So they bring a lot. And then when you get outside of the football world, I mean, they're, the rest of their athletic programs are outstanding. Their basketball program has gone to the NCAA tournament the last few seasons um, or when they had it canceled last year. But they were right there. They were going to go again this mm-hmm. last season 
before they canceled it. Um, they uh, their baseball program is is making some big strides and having some big wins. Their women's softball program, their track and field, their uh, their club hockey program had their women's hockey program won a division a national championship um, at the division two level. They were or division three, but basically, you know. Liberty brings all the sports, and I think that they would be a great all sports member for the American Athletic Conference. They bring the viewership, and they're only they're a school that has an unlimited ceiling right now. They're only going to continue to expand. Fourth year in the FBS, just came off of a ten win season, and they were on track for a great year with a four and one record so far to start the year. So they bring a lot to the table on both sides. Awesome, thanks for touching on that. Um, I will. Uh, I think that's definitely good good information uh, because that's something Liberty's not. Uh, a school, in my opinion, that gets enough respect and talk, doesn't get talked about enough in the national media. Uh, and I think a lot of that may be because of their their new into the FBS world still and also could be, you know, their evangelical ties. Maybe some people stay away from that. I don't know. But uh, I do appreciate your perspective on that. It's cool to hear it from somebody who has some – sounds like you have some inside uh, knowledge there. So yeah. I appreciate that. No problem. Love to be able to talk about both my schools when I can. So I hear you. Um uh, Bronco, I don't want to take up any more of your time. Uh, I appreciate you popping in tonight and giving giving us the Boise State perspective of conference expansion. And uh, once again, I encourage my viewers to please check out Bronco's channel. I'm going to post it, the link to it in my description box. So please go check out his, his videos, subscribe, uh, give him a thumbs up, and put comments and uh, support the – I've, I've, I don't know if I don't know if you guys consider this disrespectful, but uh, some people I've heard it say call it uh, the Smurf turf. I don't know. <laughs> we, we accept the Smurf turf. We know where it comes. And if you, if you don't mind me saying one last thing, I like I just like to say, go big blue <laughs> channel. Please give me the thumbs up and smash that like button. And also, please leave comments. Let me know what you think about tonight's conversation. Uh, got a Boise State fan going to join us tonight to talk about Big Twelve. Uh, to talk about Boise State possibly coming to the Big Twelve and what that would mean for the school and for the conference. We'll also touch on uh, Liberty potentially being a candidate to go to the AAC and what they would bring to the conference. So without further ado, my special guest, Bronco Blameyer. I hope everyone enjoyed my conversation with Bronco. Once again, I ask that you please go check his channel out. Please uh, give him a subscribe, give him a like on his videos, and check out what he has to say. He's very passionate about Boise State and college football in general. He doesn't touch just on Boise State, but he touches on college football uh, across the board. And and also, don't forget to subscribe to me. You can find me on Twitter, at Coos206. Go check me out there. I hope you enjoyed my conversation with Bronco. As you can tell, he's very passionate about Boise State football and about college football in general. So please go check his videos out. Please subscribe to his channel. Like his videos. While you're at it, please subscribe to my channel. Like my, well, like this video. And please share Kuz's Corner with your friends. And thank you for tuning in. Until next time.